talking now in the TEDx studio to Dr. Anita Goel, who's really quite popular here today. Dr. Goel, um, are you trying to make a physician out of each and every one of us? Is that what you're doing? Yes, I think it's important to empower everybody to take ownership over their own health. Good. Before we talk any further, let's just look at your life's achievements so far. Only 37 years old and one of the top leaders working on the forefront of science, technology and entrepreneurship. Dr. Anita Goel, Chairman and Scientific Director of NanoBioSim. For over 15 years, Dr. Goel has been advancing a new scientific frontier called NanoBioPhysics. She aims to empower people worldwide to diagnose their own disease information rapidly and accurately with the Gene Radar Technology Platform, a portable diagnostic device. A young, talented visionary building new high-tech bridges between developed and developing world economies. I live on the intersection of many different worlds, physics, uh, biology, and nanotechnology. So what we have created out of that is something called Gene Radar. Radar stands for Rapid, Accurate, Deployable, Adaptable, Robust Gene-Based Detection System. <laughs> We're really empowering people all over the world to be able to have that information, diagnose their own disease, and then uh, take the next step uh, to get the access to the therapies that are necessary. So why is self-diagnosis so important? It's very important, I think, to, first of all, empower people to take ownership over their own health. Because, uh, you know, traditionally in the healthcare system, we go as, uh, you know, we put ourselves. the paradigm was you put yourself as a patient at the mercy of the doctor, the healthcare system, the healthcare workers. I think part of what needs to happen as a global shift in healthcare and medicine is each individual takes ownership and is empowered to uh, manage their own health and their own well-being. Um, so self-diagnosis is the first step towards that. When you have the power to know what you have, it gives you a sense of responsibility to act on that knowledge. It gives you responsibility for your own body, but yes. it also empowers you in what other way, I wonder? I think it empowers your mindset, because now you think you're, it's sort of like it, being a consumer who goes to a mall and you have many options of uh, products to buy. So I think it, it shifts the consciousness of an individual to treat doctors and the healthcare system more as consultants who help you manage your healthcare, consultants and advisors, rather uh, than as individuals to whom you give ownership over your health. But that requires a change in mindset of the physicians as well, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, yes. Are they willing to, to work with you on this? I think that it's, uh, you know, these things, uh, technologies can often change the game and they can be disruptive to the way patterns have been set over the past years. Uh, so technologies can end up driving new trends because of that. Uh, I think that, you know, I myself am trained as a doctor. There are a number of doctors who get it and who want to be a part of this. We're actually interested in building an ecosystem of collaborators from medical people and non-medical people to help kind of usher in really taking the ability of diagnosing disease outside of a hospital or pathology lab, bringing it into people's homes, doctors' offices, and even rural remote villages in the developing world. And that takes kind of, you know, they say it takes a village to change the world. So it really takes a community, a village, an ecosystem to help bring. It's not enough to have a disruptive technology platform. You need to have a whole ecosystem of stakeholders and collaborators to help bring, usher it in, into society in a, in a way that is meaningful. I myself am what you might call a assertive patient. I usually know what I have before I go to a doctor, but my, experience with that is that they don't really take to me. When I come in and tell them I have a bladder infection or I have this or I have that, the first thing they tell me is, have a seat ma'am and let me do the talking. Right. So what do I need as an empowered patient to tell my physician that I already know what's wrong with me? I think that uh, you've hit the nail on the head. 
the consciousness of the healthcare industry has to shift where you're accountable to the patient as a whole. Uh, right now, there's a lot of reductionistic silos in medicine. You know, there's this specialty and that specialty. And when you go as a patient into many healthcare systems, you're treated like a, uh, a or a, you know, in a factory on an assembly line. You know, the cardiac specialty saw you, the GI specialty saw you. I think what is needed is an integrated, holistic approach to you, uh, the patient as a whole human being and treating these specialties and the specialist as consultants in their, in their particular domains. And the ability to diagnose yourself and, and know what you have gives you power in managing your own health and well-being. Would it also have an effect in, as a, like cost reduction in, in healthcare? Yes. How, how so? Well, so our philosophy is that a lot of the traditional infrastructure that's needed in diagnosis, you know, what happens in a hospital a patient comes in suspect of sepsis, a blood infection. You draw their blood, you send it down to the basement of the hospital or the pathology lab. You can wait several days before the blood culture results go back. In the meantime, today what's done is people just start throwing antibiotics at the patient because they don't know what they have and they do something called clinical judgment. Uh, with a device such as ours, you would be able to diagnose it on the spot at the patient's bedside and immediately tailor the antibiotic therapy to, to the bug that's right. there. So you cut so you're the not time. experimenting with antibiotics, you know exactly right. which one to apply. Exactly. You, yeah, and you cut the time and you cut a lot of the infrastructure that's needed because you can do the same process on a small portable device and a little disposable chip. What exactly does the gene radar device do? I mean, it's a small thing, it's a small box. Yeah. How, how does it work? So, uh, so you take a drop of blood or saliva, stick it into a little chip, stick it into a portable device giving you the ability to rapidly diagnose what kind of disease is there based on a genetic fingerprint or a DNA RNA sensing capability. Do you think that um, everybody should have your, your little box, let's call it that yes, way? Yes, I mean, I think the challenge is to make it affordable enough and to make it deployable enough so that one day, you know, you know the 6.6 .6 billion people on Earth, everybody gets infected at some point in their life. And uh, if we can make it cheap enough, affordable enough so that basically people everywhere would have access to their own information yeah. about their disease. How, how I, to make it cheaper? I mean... I think that's... Uh, it involves a shift in our financial models and financial engineering. Most people think, uh, you know, high profit margins make as much money as possible. I like to think differently. I think we should make it as cheap as possible to make it available to people at the bottom of the pyramid and Maybe high insurance volume. Insurance companies should help out? Insurance Health companies, insurance. doctors, patients, governments, NGOs, uh, other applications. Basically, we need a village. Is, is, it, <laughs> is it feasible? Are you optimistic? Yes. Will absolutely. it happen? Yes. Yeah? Well, good luck to you. Thank you very much. There's one more question I'd like to ask yes. you that I ask everybody. And to be honest, the people I've asked so far have all named you. Who is the person most inspiring to you today at TEDx? I would have to say uh, I really like Gerard Ethoft. Yes, and the Dutch uh, phys uh, he, physicist. Yes, yes. Uh, I share being a physicist with him and very inspired by a lot of his wonderful work. Anything else you're looking forward to today? Uh, yeah, all of the talks are all great. It. It's wonderful uh, kind of uh, interplay of uh, science, technology, and emotion and entertainment. Yes, <laughs> all of that. It must be good to you to know that your talk was very inspiring to many people here today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Dr. Anita Goel.